What I'm going to do with these Goodwill videos uh, is that I'm going to front load all of the miniatures stuff that I found because I think that's uh, what people are most interested in. And then afterwards, I'll talk about the random stuff that I found. Uh, and boy, oh boy, we got some miniatures today. Just a whole big mixed lot of mostly miniatures from the 70s and 80s, if you can believe that. This was at the normal Goodwill. Um, honestly, if these, if these lots were, like, actually split up between, like, play sets or stuff, I might have just, like, left them there so maybe some kid could play with these cool 80s toys. Uh, but that's not how it was. They were all kind of split up randomly. Like, they had... Oh, I don't know, like a... Like, there's some of these weird ones that are, like, made in England and Germany and stuff. And they were all mixed in there, too. And they're all different sizes. So, I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to be able to do a video on these and appreciate these. And I do appreciate these. These are mostly from a company called... What a creepy name, if you actually consider it. That was a company in the 80s that uh, took advantage of the D&D craze by releasing just a whole bunch of dang old uh, stuff for kids. Mostly play sets that were, uh, a lot of them unfortunately were just completely ripping off D&D, taking their art directly from the advanced D&D monster manuals. Yeah, more on that later when I show some close-ups of these miniatures, but uh, yeah... These are definitely... Now, the company that made these actually went through a transition in the early 80s, and then they went to mainland China, and they started to make uh, different versions of the miniatures. And it's fascinating to me. It might not be to you, but it's really funny to me because I actually found a bunch of these old miniatures that were the uh, revised versions, and I painted some of them up. And these are, like, more rubbery. I've, I've been told that these are actually made out of, like, rubber... But, I don't know. These are some of the first miniatures that I ever painted. And these uh, these are actually called gargoyles. Uh, even though they really look like demons or devils. But, I painted them to look like devils or demons. But, apparently, uh, these were known as gargoyles. Uh, and so, yeah, you can see, even though I these have been painted for years and thrown in boxes and stuff. They've just been sitting around... And kicking around, they, they took the paint really well. So whatever weird... Uh, this would have been in the mid-80s. Whatever weird material these were made out of that's like super rubbery. It's not PVC, because it's actually way more rubbery than PVC. But it takes paint way better than P PVC does. So who knows what sort of 80s mix of <laughs> material this is. But it's, it's very high quality. These uh, revised versions are like indestructible. Uh, let me see the... And if you look, you can see... Now, I'm pretty sure they retooled these. So, obviously, uh, these are from the same mold, but it's been retooled. And I'm not sure if that was because of simplicity's sake, or perhaps the new, more rubbery material. Because these original ones from the 1980... Oh, 81, I want to say? They're early 80s. The original ones are hard plastic, just like this, the hot, you know, the sort of uh, 80s plastic that we all know and love. Uh, and then the newer ones are this rubbery material. So maybe the material couldn't be used in these molds that had, like, very specific small parts. Like, you can see he has a uh, Morningstar flail-type whip here. And they just kind of turned that into a... Uh, less detailed version, and uh, they're a little, I think they're a little bit chunkier, too. Uh, they might be a little bit chunkier, too. But you can see that this is actually the case for several of these miniatures. Here's the original plastic one, and the remake actually was in a s very similar... It's so weird, because this was in the same pack. So this is actually very similar to the hard plastic... It's obviously slightly different, but it's not as different as the rubbery ones. So these were in the same pack as those gargoyle demons. So yeah, you can see that the original one had like a magical wand, which was the classic 80s magical wand topped with a star. And then the recast one just has a big old ball on top of it. 
And I can't help but think that this might have just been for ease of manufacturing. It might not even had like a purpose. They might have just retooled the molds because like we got to get like so many more of these out the door. So clearly exact same mold. I, I doubt they would have went through the trouble of uh, making uh, an expensive mold. I think they just retooled it. There's more flash and injection points on the... Uh, yeah, you can see the injection points more clearly on the one that was made later on. Yeah, you can see this says Hong Kong. Yeah, I didn't even notice this before. You can actually see that this is marked with Hong Kong. I got to do my thing. But definitely the one from mainland China. That is 100% marked with uh, P PRC for People's Republic of China. So... Obviously, all this stuff is used, uh, but uh, yeah, and we'll talk about this more later, but uh, the original run of these uh, basically had like designs that were completely ripped uh, directly from the D&D &D, uh, monster manual, and I have, <laughs> so they had to do some drastic changes in the molds for some of the miniatures, because TSR back then was uh, much, much more uh, protective of their copyright. So the Nagas, in particular, looked really close to like what the Nagas were uh, in the D&D &D Advanced Dungeons & Dragons book. So this was their solution when they redid the molds. That's where you get these faceless Naga from. And so, yeah, this is the one, one of the ones that I already had. Uh, and, yeah, you can see this is the... <laughs> retooling of the mold where uh, no more issues with copyright infringement <laughs> because <laughs> you can't say this looks anything like a Naga because they just took off the face. And even funnier is like the orcs because they just sliced the faces off those. So, yeah. So these look really neat. I really like the fact that I got some of these. Now, these are the ones that are known as demons. Yeah, see, these are the ones that are known as actual demons. The other ones are all gargoyles, but uh, this is hard plastic. I'm pretty sure I could actually... I'm pretty sure I could actually get a good adhesion on here and uh, paint these guys up. And that would be kind of cool to paint up some old school toys from the 80s. Toys that are actually older than I am. I'm shocked, I know. Uh, but yeah, that's really cool. And you get all the different variations. I only had, like, the two variations. I had the one with the scimitar, quote-unquote, gargoyle guys with some nice-looking pole arms. So, yeah. And then we have some soldiers, of course, uh, by the same company. I believe I would actually have to look these up because I don't know anything about the Knights set. So these were definitely made by the same company. Ooh, and we got some... Uh, Viking, Barbarian, slash Giants. So if the... I guess this was just standard size. So they looked a lot like uh, the old school Giants. But uh, yeah, the Wizard here. So these guys actually just would be probably Barbarians or something like that. Really neat details. Uh, some of the parts have been broken off. But I'm really surprised, considering how old these are, and obviously these these were not part of a, like a collection. Uh, these were obviously stuff that was played. Though actually, I don't know. Maybe these were part of a collection because I I have the uh, I have the uh, the the sets that were inspired by D and D. But obviously, there's other miniatures that are from different sets. This is 19. 1989 Hong Kong. These are like 1989 Hong Kong. Kind of like gladiator looking guys. That's all the gold ones. I don't think these are from the same set. They look very familiar. They might be, actually. But I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't recognize these. I know the knights. The blue knights are definitely from the same sets as the D&D &D stuff. Plenty of the gargoyles. I'm definitely painting up some of these plastic gargoyles. Maybe I'll paint them up as actual gargoyles, or maybe I'll paint them up as uh, demons. I don't know. They, they really do look like devils. 
we'll see the progression of my paint jobs as I paint these up and then compare them to the old the old ones that I painted. <laughs> Though, you know what? This is an effective paint job. Just a little bit of very weak dry brushing on the, the wings. And, uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. And, of course, the Dragon Riders who are eagle-eyed. I found one of these previously at the Goodwill by the Pound. So, yeah. Uh, I think these sets are selling for pretty high... So, yeah. <laughs> and look at this. Uh, this looks intentional to me. This definitely makes me suspicious that this was just a set that kids were playing with. Because this looks very intentional. This is hard plastic. So I don't see how uh, anyone could accidentally cut off the head perfectly of one of these dragon riders. <laughs> so I think it was uh, this was a set that kids probably used to mess around with back in the day. Uh, we got some Davy Crockett-esque stuff, too, which I have I have no idea. See, these were all kind of mixed up, so I wouldn't have bought anything like this because this is not this is not in the genre that I like, but uh, I grabbed them because all these lots were kind of all together. So that's all stuff that I'm really not sure. And this guy, this guy was randomly in one of the lots. Look at this guy. My God. This guy looks so weird. I just assumed that this guy was like a, a newer toy because of the design and colors and stuff. But no, if you can see that, that's 1982. 1982 Arco Independent LTD Hong Kong 1982. Crazy. This this that's why I thought this was maybe just kind of a random collection of random toys from some person who had them from when they were a kid in the eighties, because like if this was a collection, there's no rhyme or reason. <laughs> uh, and then we have these, which I really like. These are almost in perfect scale for D and D, and I have no clue what these are. These are, obviously, these are like barbarians, right? Barbarians. I mean, this, maybe Vikings. You know, these are very similar to the uh, crossbow and catapults, which, spoiler alert, I found some of the newer crossbow and catapult stuff at another store. So maybe that's, maybe that's what these came from. I, I don't know. And then more... Uh, these look really cool. I'm 100% painting these up as either town guards or thugs. I love like the uh, I love the weird expression and the square shields. That's really nice. These definitely look like classic thugs. So these might be crossbow and catapults too. I I don't know. I'm just basing that on like the the size of the bases, so who, who knows? I don't know. You know what? Talking about the crossbow and catapults thing, let's go and move on to the Goodwill by the Pound Finds, where I found a bunch of the 2007 version of crossbow and catapults, and I, I honestly assumed that maybe these had something to do with Games Workshop, but uh, no, I don't think so. They just look very much like the Big old chonky style that was very much in fashion. This is the latest version, 2007. So this is like orcs versus humans. The big orc. And he's holding up a severed head. And he's got a very... We'll show you some stills after this, but he's definitely got a Games Workshop style design. Uh, yeah, so that's that looks cool. They're a little bit small for D&D. But these would make, like, nice little, like, uh, alternative thrall miniatures for if you had just an orc army with a bunch of small little uh, orcs that were the vanguard or something. Some really lantern-jawed uh, <laughs> yeah, they don't look like the best specimens of, like, Th 
they definitely look a little bit space marine What with their shoulder pauldrons and massive, <laughs> massive gloves and whatnot. So these are really fun. I'm happy I found these. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna do something with these. It's 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 good to like get a small collection of old toys like this. And then to top it off, I found. At the Goodwill by the Pound, a bunch of Magic the Gathering miniatures from, uh, I believe it was 2015, I want to say, somewhere in there. Yeah, so these are all from the main game. Uh, these were at the Goodwill by the Pound, and uh, nobody wanted them, apparently, because they were sitting there after everybody had gone through everything already. So I'm really happy about this. Is this? No, it's not a dupe, but... Yeah, I mean, this this would make... I love the translucent ones. I have these miniatures already, but it's nice to have extras because now I have the opportunity to really mess around with these and not really worry about, oh, maybe I want to sell the the game later on if it's worth money. So now i got a bunch of miniatures that I don't have to really care about, and I can just uh, do whatever I want with them, especially these like little phoenix birds. These do these phoenixes do actually remind me a little bit of the original Bloodbird design in D and D, so I might keep some of the translucent stuff and maybe paint up some of the body, so it's less of a phoenix and more of a flaming bird. And we got some hellhounds. I might do something weird like paint like half of the body. Uh non-translucent or maybe just paint like i maybe just start like cut it off the base paint the body parts as regular and then just have the i can't actually tell if this is a cat or a doggo well, anyways i'll just i'll paint the body regular and then just leave the flames there so yeah look at these always fun to mess around with these i painted up some of these and they look great hold on hold on so these magic the gathering miniatures actually have a really nice detail uh, this is after, like, I ruined the guy, <laughs> and uh, I uh, kind of gave him too many, kind of slopped the paint on this guy a little bit too much, but still, you can tell what's going on there. He's a crazy guy. That's from, I think, the Innistrad set, I think. And then a little hunter guy that I gave a quick paint job to, and I rebased these guys, too. This is also from one of the Magic the Gathering... Um, uh, Magic the Gathering Expanses. And then these cult guys, which I really like. Again, you the detail on these Magic the Gathering miniatures are actually really nice. But you kind of have to paint them to see them because they're made out of that... Um, they're just made out of a plastic where it's, it's actually very difficult to see the details. Okay, so that was the miniatures, so here's the random stuff. Uh, I found this little, I think, yeah, this is definitely a Star Wars guy. He's all beat up, though. I don't know why I grab, I don't think there's much I can really do with him. Like, maybe take the head off and use that as, like, a mounted weird, like, alien head or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I, just, I saw that. <laughs> this really old, uh... I thought this would look good, like, in a goblin village if I just painted this like a statue. I think it would actually look kind of nice, especially if I weathered it up and stuff. This is, like, a 1995 toy. Like, very hard plastics. I, you know, I was just talking about the hard plastic before. You don't really see that hard plasticky stuff nowadays, so. Yeah, I think spray-painted and then just weathered up. I think this would make a really nice, goofy, 
like goblin statue or maybe even a it's almost a little bit too rough to be a kobold statue so and then this thing which is a toy from jurassic park i don't know it looked really cool but i'm not exactly sure what i might or might not do with it it's obviously the little um it's obviously the little touring bubble thing that they were stuck in and uh yeah so it kind of pops open there i don't know this is a little bit too sci-fi i don't know i might try to do something with this but i thought it was kind of cool that it was like this was like in scale with D stuff so i don't know so it's just like it's got little wheels on it and stuff but so yeah you could fit a miniature in there if you really wanted to I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I This just looked cool, so I don't know. Into the bits bag with it. Uh, and then just some random bits. Uh, I think I got these buttons because they were the same size as small bases for D&D. &D. That's kind of a difficult thing to find. It's a nice little piece of uh, just broken wood here. Just a partial log. I thought that looked cool, and you generally don't see something like that. The deep detail and stuff. Yeah, I thought this looked pretty cool. Uh, Lego wheel. Some of these really tough... I don't know what these are, but this is like tough plastic. Like little nautical parts. Which I thought looked pretty decent. A little uh, hexagon spear thing. This hard plastic uh, longhorn steer. A little bit big for D and D, but I thought this might be cool to like modify into a stench cow, or an arc or something like that. Uh, table roughly in scale with D and D. Nice plank table would make a good uh, like orc table or something like that. Uh, and one of these weird dice. I love weird dice. Every time I see a weird dice like this, where it's just like the letters. Like I always think of like I'm gonna base like a puzzle around something like this. I'm having a nice collection of very weird dice. That I put in my big dice bag here with all the rest of my dice. And uh, eventually I'm going to do something like that. <laughs> I don't know why I grabbed this guy. Kind of a beat up little Lego farmer guy. Uh, I got some random toy heads. I thought these looked interesting. They made like might look good with like as like I was thinking they might look good as like totems outside of a barbarian village or something like that and uh, yeah and then a lovely crystal heart because who doesn't need that like a, a diamond oblong heart which is very shiny which I think would look neat as a little bit of terrain, or maybe maybe even like a physical bit of maybe even a physical bit of little like handout stuff for D and D. So yeah, and yeah, some goose, some little geese, and another walrus, which is good. And I don't know if I ever saw many of these. There's some nice. Maybe I showed these before, this, like, kind of oblong little bits of um, plastic stuff there. And a wheel, which is obviously, like, a Playmobil wheel, but this would look nice. That's just part of the joke. got some board game stuff. I found a sealed Oregon Trail card game, sealed from Target. I've seen that before. I got a Cards Against Humanity. I got a sealed pack i don't know if this is worth any money or anything but i thought i'd grab it just in case and guess what uh there was a civilization 5 box missing the actual dvd but it wasn't missing the manual and the manual has a code on it and i was actually able to redeem the code and get the game so <laughs> like they always do People at Goodwill they steal the game discs and they leave the they leave the empty cases there, which bugs the heck out of me. I, I sometimes wonder like maybe like people just donate the empty cases, but 
there's so many empty cases that I think a lot of the times some people just like grab the discs only and then they leave the empty cases. Even though if they really were like selling this stuff online, if they kept the cases, then that would be like like twice the money or something. I've, I've seen so many like popular Pokemon games and stuff where just it's just the empty cases, and it's just like you wonder like oh, okay did did this get did all of this get donated with empty case or are people taking the games out of it and then throwing the cases back because the cases weigh a little bit money more, <laughs> which is like that's. That would be bizarre. Uh, speaking of, of video game stuff, I have a lovely AV adapter here for the Sony PlayStation. Now, this is the one where like I never could tell the difference between the Sony PlayStation 1 and the Sony PlayStation 2 AV stuff. Obviously, I have my Sony PlayStation uh, component cables set up. So these little composite cables here would only be good for the PlayStation 1. And I believe... This is the same setup, so even if this is technically for the PlayStation 2, I believe this would work for the PlayStation 1. I'll have to test that out, though, because I do have a PlayStation 1 that's that, uh, that would be able to work in. So, yeah, I found this neat little man-catcher toy, which is too big, but I thought maybe it'd look neat as, like, a, a lightning rod or something like that. Little kit, little cat. I thought that would was a... Nice piece of kitsch. Oh, yeah, and here they are. Here are... No, these are different. So these are actually, like, diamond-style shapes. These aren't random shapes. But I thought these were pretty neat. Let's see. You can actually see... These would might make good, like, handouts or even some sort of... I don't know, handouts or some sort of just, like, little massive crystal displays. They might be better off as handouts. I uh, got some more uh, little... Uh, I don't know which exactly you'd call this. Just like little plastic jewel things. But these come in useful for crafting stuff every once in a while. And I actually got a little bit, which has some very interesting little bits, including there's some, like, um, some little tentacle beads. Oh, okay, so they're not tentacles, they're, <laughs> they're seahorses. So, yeah. So, just random stuff like that. Obviously, it would look very interesting in a wall where maybe there's some seahorse frescoes built into the wall. And I, I know I've seen people use, like, these little beads before uh, for, like, little accoutrements. Like, these little ones would make good, like, uh, sconces. And I believe there was a Black Magic Craft video where he used similar little beads to make uh, candle sconces. Or just candelabras. So, yeah. Ooh, and these little, these little tiny beads here might be useful for some sort of... I don't know. They're small enough, so they might be useful. So a very small King Arthur-style miniature. With the weird, like, medieval warrior haircut and sword. But this is much too small for D&D. But uh, it could be, like, a statue or something like that. I don't know. I just saw this. It's so weird at the Goodwill by the Pound. You'll find, like, just random singular stuff like that so and finally now last but not least we'll do the dvds uh these are all like in mint condition sherlock holmes scott pilgrim uh the complete first season of rome uh jupiter ascending a gloriously bad movie resident evil trilogy never saw the fourth one i've never that's one of those ones you i think maybe like they didn't, didn't print that many of them uh at world's end Underworld Rise of the Lichens. Uh, Moana, Blu-ray. Uh, we got John Carter. This is a movie I've been hearing about more and more online, how it was, like, really good, but, like, people didn't uh, give it a chance or something. So, yeah, it was just seems... I will check this out. And the Assassin's Creed movie. I kept on hearing about this. Kept on hearing about this. Didn't even realize it got released. 
So, yeah. Uh, a couple of video game things. Dance Dance Revolution, Mint Condition. Uh, Spec Ops, Airborne Command, also Mint Condition. This was the old school rental cases. Uh, I think this is a rental case. This I, No, I asked, this is actually an electronics boutique case. Oh, okay. Please excuse me. So this is, this is how they recased stuff. So they would just take all the innards out of the game and put it in a full-size DVD case. <laughs> and then finally, SOCOM Navy SEALs uh, for the PlayStation uh, 2, uh, which I believe this is the game which I think you could use the headset on it, uh, network adapter... I don't know. I, maybe it's not this one, but in one of the games you could use the headset adapter on it. And it was some interesting stuff. So yes, obviously, some very interesting, cool stuff that I found out and about. And yeah, 